everybody. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I just did a little workout. I was teaching a class, so I'm a little sweaty. But uh, today we're gonna talk about muscle imbalances because I've talked about it in a lot of different videos, but I don't really always explain what am I talking about. So you might hear me talk about a muscle imbalance, a syndrome, a dominant muscle, but what does that actually mean? So I'm gonna break down what that means, why it happens, and how you can fix it. So we're gonna really focus on the three most common muscle imbalance syndromes that there are. We have upper cross syndrome, lower crossed syndrome, and pronation distortion syndrome. Now I will say right off the bat, a lot of these are like way more intimidating and scary sounding than they actually are. And there are some very simple changes that you can make that will help you strengthen the correct muscles to get out of these syndromes. But if you don't take the time to actually train to fix these, you can have a lot of serious damage within your body. So we're gonna start with upper cross syndrome. What is that? So upper cross syndrome is typically characterized by a forward head and rounded shoulders. Am I doing it? I look like a hermit, like a hermit crab, not like a hermit. Anyway, so in this syndrome, one of the biggest things that's happening, you're lengthening the cervical flexors and the muscles of the upper back. Now because of this, you are shortening other muscles in return. They're becoming overly active and they're becoming very dominant. So that would be like your upper traps, your chest, and then your lats. Now a lot of this happens because we're sitting down all the time, a lot of times hunching over desks and hunching over computers. And I've talked about this in this video, this video, both of these videos, but this has a lot to do with the idea of flexion versus extension. So essentially the muscles in the front of our body are in charge of flexion, and then the muscles in the back of our body are in charge of extension. Now that's again, like really breaking it down simple, but that's the easiest way to think about it. So essentially if we are sitting down all day, we are constantly in flexion, and we're really not training the muscles that um, are in the back of the body to hold us up for extension. So because of that, we are overly working those flexing muscles, which is causing us to get that roundedness of the back and the lengthening of those muscles, which um, is really just going to weaken them because you're not using them. So how do we fix this? Well, with my clients with this syndrome, I'm typically trying to strengthen the rhomboids and then the mid and low traps. Your traps are actually three different muscles and they all have three different muscle actions, which I think is really cool because I'm a super nerd, but anyway. Some specific exercises that you wanna focus on. A farmer carry. This is actually a great one for anybody because it does work a lot more than just um, your mid and low traps, but it's really, really great also just for teaching us like how to stay upright when we're holding something on one side of the body, which is what we do all the time, walking around with a purse or with a bag, groceries. So it's just a great uh, way to improve our overall posture. A rear delt fly is another great one. By pulling those shoulder blades together, right in between that, that's your rhomboid. So that is doing a lot of the muscle action right there, strengthening that muscle. And then really just priming with some scapular retraction. Uh, a lot of my clients, like I will just have them sit, maybe with a band or maybe with nothing, sitting, pulling down against their own resistance. It's just gonna make you feel how to pull those shoulder blades together and how to really, um, you know, words how to depress the shoulders. So something you should avoid with this syndrome is excessive planking. I know, I'm like the queen of planks, I love planks, but if you are constantly planking, even though you are working the muscles of the back of the body as well, you're just not really setting yourself up for success because you're just in this motion where you're gonna wanna hunch forward. So if I do planks with clients um, who have this upper cross syndrome, I'm always making sure that I do a ton of priming, getting those shoulder blades to come together, really retracting the shoulders, really emphasizing it while they're in that motion of planks. So next one is lower cross syndrome. Now this is usually characterized by an anterior pelvic tilt or ATP. So this essentially means that I always say like you're doing the Instagram booty where you push your pelvis forward and then your butt looks a lot bigger than it is. So while you're in this position, you're really lengthening the glutes, the core stabilizers, and then the muscles that run along your spine, which is the erector spinae. Then in turn, you're really gonna be shortening like your hip flexors, your inner thigh complex, um, and then your lats as well. And again, this happens because of excessive sitting. Sitting is the new smoking, everybody. So you, I would fix this by primarily focusing on strengthening the glutes and the core. Some great exercises to do, a bird dog is a really great one. This takes a lot of core stability and we're really trying to work on those deep core stabilizers. So you're not gonna feel that like crunching burn, but this is more of like a really great foundational move that's gonna help you get back in touch with the foundation of your core. Kev, can you turn that down? Thank you.
Yeah, I'll just close the door. Something else I would focus on is tube walking. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. A lot of people have differing opinions, but um, you wanna take a pretty like heavy resistance band. You're also gonna feel this in the abductors, the outer thighs, which is like also great. But this is really gonna help people who cannot activate their glutes their glutes and then finally a great one is just like a good old-fashioned hollow hold laying on the ground reaching those legs long really trying to keep the low back pin down onto the floor it's so simple but it is so effective just for building that like pure abdominal core strength something I would avoid is core work with a lot of flexion I typically try to avoid doing a ton of this anyway since we are constantly in flexion all day long but a lot of people with this muscle imbalance um, have really really tight or overactive hip flexion flexors so if you're doing a lot of those flexion movements many times the hip flexors will just take over and then they're not going to get any of the core stabilizing benefits which is what they actually need so I do not really do any kind of flexion movements with any of my clients who have lower cross syndrome and then oh we shaken all right guys, and last one is pronation distortion syndrome. So this is typically characterized by knock knees, where like your knees go in together, and then pronated feet. So pronated feet is like when they come in toward each other. Supinated would be out. I always remember this, I don't know why I remember it this way, but prone or pronated, pronation is down, and then supinated or supine is up. But I remember it this way because like you hold a bowl of soup S is for soup, so supinated, but then you pour the soup out for prone or pronation. Is that stupid? So with this muscle imbalance, you're typically lengthening the glutes and the tibialis. So there is an anterior and posterior tibialis, um, but you're typically lengthening both of those. Weight isn't good. And then it's gonna shorten the muscles of the calves, um, your inner thigh complex, your hip flexors, your IT band, all that stuff around the leg. So you wanna fix this by strengthening that anterior and posterior tibialis as well as the glute med and the glute max. So you're gonna get four exercises for this one to hit all four of those muscles. This isn't so much an exercise, but it is a great priming exercise that I like to do with my clients who have foot issues, heel walks. So I have them take off their shoes before we do anything and they'll walk across the floor on their heels for a few minutes. It is really great for that anterior tibialis. And I know that like it can seem really silly doing some of these priming exercises, but especially with your feet, like that is literally your foundation when you're working out. Like you will land on your feet, you're standing on your feet. So if you're already not quite stable or right down there, it's gonna affect everything. Just remember that the body is a chain. So if one thing is off, it's gonna have really bad consequences for everything else. So I always make my clients who have this issue do these heel walks and it always helps set them up for a lot more control and a lot more success. And then to hit that posterior tibialis, um, I will do single leg calf raises. I just like to do single leg, honestly, because number one, it's gonna be harder, like it's gonna fire that muscle a little bit faster. And then number two, it's really great for balance. It's really great for that unilateral training, making sure that one side is not taking over for the other. So it can also show you like what a stronger or weaker side is where you need to put a little bit more emphasis on. To work that glute need, I love doing a clamshell. This is an amazing exercise that a lot of people just kind of like brush over as being like silly I don't know like rinky dink Pilates or bar or something but it is so important to do this before you start working out like I'm always having people do clamshells or bridges within the priming part of their workout to make sure that they are really going to use the correct muscles that need to be worked on during the bulk of the resistance training. And then I already gave it away, but floor bridge for that glute max, it's just such a versatile exercise. There's so much that you can do with it. You can add a band, you can do single leg, elevated, weighted. If you wanna see me do a thousand, you can click right up here. That was a terrible decision. And then with clients with um, these foot or knee issues, avoid running avoid high impact training. Remember, we already talked about it. The foot is gonna be the landing point. If your landing point is not secure, 
Nothing else is gonna be done right, all right? So you're gonna see much better results if you work a lot more stability, balance, working slow. That's the kind of training that you wanna do with yourself if you have this issue or with clients if you have these issues. All right, guys, well, I hope that that explains a little bit more about what I'm always rambling about, what I get so like fired up and passionate about in my videos. Any questions, definitely leave it in the comments below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because you do not wanna miss any of that Zoe content, right, Zoe? Yeah! All right, guys, we will see you all soon. Bye. Say bye, Zoe. Oh, God. <laughs>